Okay, welcome to pre-calculus. Calculus is going to be dealing a lot with functions, and so this course is going to give you a strong background in functions. This uh, title of this first section could almost be thought of as the theme of the text. We're going to be dealing with functions in various ways. Here, let's do a very simple uh, illustration. Here's a graphical illustration of a function. It's basically a uh, relationship between two variables. We frequently talk about x and y. This variable frequently is time, so something versus time. Whenever you specify an x, there's going to be a unique value of y that results. Uh, for instance, something which is not a function would be something like a circle, because for a particular value of x, notice there are two possible values of y. So there's like an ambiguity there. So a function is just a, a special kind of relation. Any kind of a graph whatsoever, you know, like this, could be thought of as a relation. But graphs of this particular kind are of particular interest in calculus. And so they're given a special name, and that's functions. I'd like to introduce you to some of the tools we're going to be using in this text. The author of the text, uh, I think presumes you're using a graphing calculator. And you're free to use that if you like, but I have mixed feelings about that. Let me bring up my calculator here. This is the one I'll be using on screen. It's not a graphing calculator. But a, a calculator typically is a handheld device that you want to use when you want to get uh, type out a, um, a problem and get some answers. And so I think it's better to use a, an appropriate tool for uh, the appropriate purpose. When we're going to do graphing, uh, we're going to use Graphmatica. At least I'm going to use that. And it's a free download, so um, it would be a good idea for you to download it and you could uh, play with it yourself. Okay, a graphing um, tool like this can be used, like for instance, if I were to type in uh, y equals x squared. Notice I have to use that little caret that's above the 6 on your keyboard and put a 2 there. That would show a graph of that. And if I were to say y equals x minus 5, you see I can graph various functions and so forth. And they're all nicely color-coded. The advantage of using a graphing program versus a um, a graphing calculator is you actually have some room to see what it is and so forth. Um, so you're free to use a graphing calculator if you want to have something you can take into a standardized test, but uh, uh, there are different brands and so forth. So I'm just going to stick with um, generic tools here that you can use in your computer. Okay. Uh, another tool that I highly recommend is uh, using a spreadsheet. Now, you can use Excel if you have Microsoft Office, but that's a big, expensive program, and not everybody has that. Um, I recommend there's OpenOffice, and there's a new version now that is called LibreOffice. Libre uh, they're basically uh, split off from the same project. So you can put data in here in a, in a spreadsheet program. You can, uh, in a cell, you can put a number or you can put an equation or a formula. And a formula starts with an equal sign, and then you can tell what you want it to do. So for instance, I want to add this number and um, this number, and the result looks like we have an 8 here in the cell. But if I click on the cell, up here it shows us what we actually have, which is the formula D4 plus D6. If I come back and change this later, let's change this to a 7, hit enter. Notice that the formulas that are based on that, the formula is the same, but it has different data, so it has a different result. Okay, And so this is a very flexible tool for doing calculations. Uh, most people associate spreadsheets with financial calculations, but they're very useful for uh, science labs, and we're going to use them in this course as well. Okay, um, Another one is Geometer Sketchpad. Now, I've been using this for a number of years, and this one is a commercial uh, product. You can put points where you want. You can put line segments. 
uh, circles. Like for instance, if I want to take the interior of this circle, I can construct the circle interior. And so now I can uh, deal with that as well. Okay, there's a lot of things you're going to see uh, me using this. By the way, you can uh, uh, put a graph up there and you can define functions algebraically that will show up on this graph. Okay, having said that, there is a new tool I would like to call your attention to called GeoGebra. And the nicest thing about this is that it's, it's a free open source project. And one of the things about open source projects is they grow using the contributions of a lot of uh, people. So different programmers who have an interest in this project have contributed to it. So for instance, in this case, if I were to put a circle, let's put a circle like this, uh, this is called the algebra view on the left, and this is the geometry view on the right. I could close this uh, window and make it all just the geometry view. But if I go to view, algebra view, it'll bring it back. Okay. So notice that under free objects we have A and B. Those are the two points I specified. And we have a dependent object, which is this uh, equation of a circle, which you might recognize. Now if I, uh, let's see, it says copy into the input bar. That's down here at the bottom. Now let's say I want to change this number to a 10. All right. Notice that plots a circle of a different radius. In any case, this has many of the same kinds of uh, features as uh, Geometer Sketchpad. It does certain things in different ways. It, it does things, uh, each of the programs do things the other doesn't do. So I'll continue to use both, but uh, I highly recommend you download this for free and get very familiar with it. And I'll be getting more familiar with it. It's fairly new to me, but I really like what I see so far. Okay. There's another um, program that's a free download, which is very relevant to our uh, needs in this course. It's really more, you think of it as a physics tool, but guess what? Most of the math developed in high school math courses was developed in order to do physics. This one allows you to take a video, and if I import a video here, let's, uh, and we can just play the, play the video, and there I am tossing a tennis ball and what you can do is, here, let's start that over. And as I, I put the marks on, I've gone through and marked each position. And then the positions of the ball over all this, uh, uh, over, the, over its path, I can plot as a graph. I can uh, capture frame by frame the data table. So I have here of X and Y at every time. So it's like a two-dimensional measuring tool. And so you can do all kinds of things. Watch the swing of a pendulum. Watch an object bob up and down on a spring. Uh, uh, watch a little moving toy. Take a video of it and analyze its motion. Take cars zipping by your, uh, in front of your house and see how fast they're moving. Uh, anyway, there's an amazing range of uh, experiments you can do. And you can take the data with it. And the kinds of things we'll be learning in this course enable you to analyze that data. By the way, if I right-click on the graph over here and go down to Analyze, it brings up a separate graphing tool, uh, which enables us to do all kinds of interesting things with this. For instance, if I say Curve Fit, here it says Fit. And down here I can say I'm going to fit a parabola to the data. Now, the data itself doesn't fit a parabola very well, but if I choose a certain subset of the data, notice that it does. So right now, it's fitting the curve to these data points, and notice it's a very good model for the uh, physical data. So the dots actually indicate measurements from the real world, and then this range of positions that I've uh, chosen here are modeled by an equation, which we have chosen to be a parabola. It looks like a quadratic equation here. And notice the coefficients for a, b, and c show up over here. Okay. Uh, there's a lot more that can be done with this, and I'll, we'll encounter this occasionally. So I'll be uh, using this tool as we go through. I'd like to take a minute just to talk about the calculator I'm going to use on the screen. Uh, this is a very nice calculator called Calc 98, and again, you can download a free version. This particular one was a $25 um, version of it, but 
It's almost the same in terms of its capabilities as the free version. Please download that and use it on the screen. When you're doing things like your homework, it's better to have an actual handheld calculator. But I want to show you what I'm going to be doing uh, uh, in this course, which is there are options here for uh, different modes of operation. So algebraic notation, for instance, notice there's an equal sign, and you would enter uh, problems like 2 plus 3 equals, and you get a 5. That's very nice, and it seems like it's very fluent. It's the way you tend to do operations when uh, you write them like 2 plus 3 equals, and then you say 5 is your answer. However, I prefer another notation, which was uh, pioneered by Hewlett Packard Company, and the HP calculators uh, don't have an equal key on it. They have an enter key, and you would do it like this. You would hit 2 you say enter, then you say 3. Then when you want to actually do the operation, you hit the plus and it'll add those. What it's doing is it's holding the various numbers you uh, enter onto a stack. So there's, uh, you see one display here, but there's actually, think of four, four levels there. And then uh, if I put the 2 in it and then the 3 in it, and then the adding adds the last two things that were entered. That might sound confusing at first, but there's a way that you actually have been uh, doing this. If you think of 2 and you put your 3 and then you add, so you entered your 2, then you put in your 3, and then when you say add, it does the addition. Okay, so this is sort of a model of how that works. So putting in the arguments of your function first and then hitting the function key, the function key executes the operation. So why would one choose to use a calculator this way? The difference is this kind of notation, when you get into complicated problems, uh, gets very tangled up with parentheses and all kinds of things. This is a parenthesis-free notation system. So watch this for just a second. What if I have a calculation that looks like this? 2 plus 3 times 5, that's a 5, minus 7.2 squared, you take the square root of the whole thing, plus 3 over 2x minus 5, the whole thing multiplied by 7. Well, let's take out these x's. I don't want that. I'm just, uh, let's put a, because I want to use numbers to calculate here. Let's say it's 2 times 4. Okay. All right, so here's our numbers. If I were to enter this in a standard algebraic calculator, if you have an algebraic calculator, I challenge you to calculate this and get the, the correct answer on the first try. But if you do it with an RPN notation, what you do is you start on the innermost, the innermost part of the, of the problem, and you do it very much like you would uh, in your head. So if I start with 5, and then enter, and then 7.2, I'm going to subtract that, and then I'm going to take that result and square it, so with the x squared key, Take that times 3, so you get 3, then times. And then I'm going to add that to the 2. And then I'm going to take the square root of this whole thing. And then I'm going to add 3. And then I'm going to do this denominator. But notice this 7.06 business is just going to float on the stack until I'm ready to use it. So now I take my 2 times 4. Here's a 2, enter, and then hit times 4, so 4 times and then 5, subtract that. Now notice this whole calculation is now completed. Multiply that by 7. And now I'm ready to divide, so I simply hit divide, and that gives me my answer. So, you try it, see if you get the same answer. Uh, I challenge you to do that on the first try, entering this in algebraic notation. Okay. That's my sales pitch for this. So get used to spending some time doing your uh, homework for this class. Uh, it's, it's good to get actually get in and engage. You need to struggle. Uh, we're learning a way of thinking for doing problem solving. Okay, with that, uh, good luck, and let's see how you do.